Welcome to the Horror Show. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Horror Show. I'm Marsha Parker, live at FearCon, and today I have the honor to interview Mr. Lou Temple. Hi, Lou. Hey, how are you? It's good to be out here in uh, Tempe, Arizona at Sun Studios for the... Uh, the FearCon. We're here with uh, Fangoria FearCon. So mm -hmm. thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Are you having a great time this weekend? Having a good time. It's uh, the weather's been nice, although we're inside most mostly. But I think it, it's cooled off a little bit. And we are uh, out in amongst. Uh, Tis the season. It's October, so we're here uh, during a, you know a good horror time of year. And uh, yeah, it's been nice. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, are you a big horror fan, or because I know you've been doing a lot of horror. We know you from Walking Dead. We yeah. also we know you from multiple Rob Zombie movies. So, is this one of your more favorite genres, or are you just happy to play with them? Um, I am a horror fan. I'm a horror fan for the uh, the art of filmmaking, and so I think that any any genre has a story to tell, and I I don't think horror is an exception. And so I, I, I'm a horror fan if it's good storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there are horror fans that are specific to a trait of horror, which may be bloodshed, may be mass mayhem and, and murder and, and, you know, violence. And, and I'm okay with that as long as there's a story. So romantic comedy, if there's a story, I'm all in. Uh, uh, suspense thriller. If there's a story, I, I'm in. So I'm I'm a campfire guy. You know, once upon a time, and we'll go from there. So if that's uh, if that's if that's built into the the work that we do, then I, I'm okay with that. And fortunately, uh, the films that I've had uh, oftentimes have been um, have been good stories. And you mentioned Rob Zombie, and that's no exception. He's uh, particularly good at telling stories. It just could, keeps improving and and I've had the good fortune of, of helping him do that in his films and uh, uh, so yeah I do I do like horror I love that the horror uh, audience is so loyal and well versed I think that uh, the fans that know um, know their genre are are some of the tops you know they you don't meet a lot of romantic comedy fans <laughs> but you meet a ton of horror fans that right. absolutely are passionate about about what they like so yeah. I, I do appreciate that yeah yeah so okay so let's talk a little bit about your work um let's let's start with walking dead what was it like to work on the set of walking dead you know i think the the um the word work is is where you start because yeah. it is a lot of work people forget that uh, they forget that it's a location shoot, which means that you're outside. They forget that it's in Atlanta, Georgia, which means you're outside, exposed <laughs> to 90 plus degrees weather every day with high 90% humidity, a lot of sun exposure, a lot of dehydration, a lot of bugs, a lot of poison oak and poison ivy, um, long days, short hours. The sun comes up, the sun goes down, and you've got a lot to do right. in a short amount of time. And the requirement, requirement of what is being asked is the bar is set high, mm -hmm. and you have to kind of be above that bar every time out. And so that takes a lot of focus, takes a lot of preparation, and, um, and a lot of efficiency. Yeah. So all that being said, at the end of a week of shooting The Walking Dead, we all take a a moment and and have a collective sigh and recognize <laughs> wow what did we just accomplish and and have a lot of pride in that and then we turn it around next week and do the same it, hopeful uh, better and that's why that show is successful so uh is it a lot of fun absolutely you know the cast is great everyone's uh, a teammate pulling on the same side of the rope. Uh, it's a family, familial atmosphere from the writers and producers, the directors, the cast, the crew. Mm -hmm. Everybody is uh, is is got the same goal, and uh, that's rare. And 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 it, and it serves the show quite a bit. And the story, the stories being told are are right. Um, and yeah, you make a a lot of wonderful friends. 
for life on that show, and I appreciate that. And I, I again appreciate that opportunity to have been able to be part of that season three. That you were from yeah. Florida. Well, I went to college in Florida, oh. in Orlando, uh, Winter Park, Florida, Rollins College, a small liberal liberal arts school where I played baseball. Oh, okay. Um, which is my first passion, and um, so. Uh, yeah, I do like Florida. Yeah. You mentioned your love of baseball. Now, is that what uh, kind of pushed you to tr go on to the Angels of the Outfield? Well, I, yes. Actually, <laughs> I was involved in baseball with the Houston Astros at that time, and I got an opportunity to work out and help Charlie Sheen prepare for Major League Two. Oh, no way! And during that time, he had a birthday party of which some producers attended, and they... Uh, they invited me to come participate in Angels in the Outfield, uh, which was shot here or on the West Coast mm -hmm. in, in the Bay Area in Los Angeles. And um, and I kind of got bit by that bug, and that was my first opportunity or first uh, feature film. And so it was uh, it was a great experience in the Disney film and, and uh, uh, you know, a, 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 ch a children's movie, which I, I really um, have had a lot of joy from and delight as being my first film and working with young guys getting started like Matthew McConaughey oh. or Adrian Brody uh, oh, yeah. which was which was you know kind of cool so that, that that's really cool for for first experience in it and to, have, to be your movie that's a phenomenal like that is one of my favorites growing up oh, was cool. was Angels in Outfield yeah. so when I was like oh man this is gonna be so cool I'm so glad to see that connection too I didn't it know was, it was, uh, that nice, was the connection yeah it was a nice transition and you know at about that time uh, I had to make a decision whether I, I'm going to continue to pursue acting or maintain my baseball career and I, I pursued acting so I'm fortunate to have had two careers one in baseball mm -hmm. and then certainly one here in acting and uh, getting a chance to go tell stories yeah yeah you, you said that um, before that you're a big story tell are you a storyteller you just love love a good story I think I am a storyteller I love telling a story but I don't mind listening to a story too um, and I think the art of storytelling is a, an important one but also, um, it, it, it's a skill and a skill set that has to be developed. And um, it, it, you know, you take for granted that you can communicate an event. And there's uh, oftentimes um, a, 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 a tack to being able to do that. So, um, so we're all storytellers. Yeah. We're telling the story of our lives every day just by saying hello or goodbye. So. Yeah, I think it's it's universal. Yeah. I think you could learn a lot just by listening, you know, so. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a skill too, yeah. absolutely. So let's, uh, let's talk about your experience with Rob Zombie a little bit. Well, Rob is uh, a storyteller. He is, uh, he's very focused on what he wants. So he knows what he wants and he wants what he knows. And there's not really an in-between on that. Mm -hmm. And so he is very focused on getting done what needs to be done and he doesn't mind trying things outside of the box but he won't waste a lot of time if they don't work uh, I think he too is loyal to his fan base as much as his fan base is loyal to him mm -hmm. and he delivers sometimes he brings them something that they, they may not have tried um, in the form of some things that interest him psychologically uh, but uh, he'll always come back to being um, a provider for his fan base. Um, you know, his, his work, his job is work as well and intense. It's, a, it's fun, but it's a day's work. You know, they, he's, you show up and you've got a job to do, and he wants you prepared to bring something to the party. Yeah. And that's uh, why you see quite often that he uses the ensemble cast that he continues to use mm -hmm. because he can trust them to bring what he's looking for to, uh, to the game. Yeah. And uh, I've had, again, the good fortune to have been part of that for a few of his, his pictures. And uh, we have one out now, 31, mm -hmm. that is, a, a, you know, a dark, twisted story of Halloween and October 31st and um, survival you know it really gets down to base instinct survival and and not just for the heroes but the villains as well yeah antagonist protagonist dilemma 
Yeah. And uh, it, I think it serves an experience that's real visceral, which is very typical of Rob, whether you go to one of his concerts or see one of his films or even attend his, his uh, haunted house. You know, I think you're always mm -hmm. going to be engaged in, in what he has to provide you. Right. It's going to be something. You're, you're going to be a little nervous, a little uncertain, and then in the end you're, you're going to be excited that you just experienced that. Yeah. So how, what was it like to be psycho head? Well, I don't think that's a very... Uh, I don't think that that necessarily is Important. something that you yeah. look, go out and yeah. look to... Uh, you know, find within yourself. I, that, that, that's a lot of work to mm -hmm. be that type of mean and ugly and and uh, dismissive of human well-being. And so it's you don't go to a happy place in your in your person to find <laughs> psycho head. So I think that's a lot of work. Um, the you know the physical appearance of the makeup that was involved is a certain amount of work. Uh, to, in the preparation. Um, I think that when you're in that type of makeup, and no one knows this better than Rob Zombie himself who does this for his shows, mm -hmm. you do become a bit different person or you're, you're able to be a person who you're not norm, you know, is not normally you. And I did experience that as Psycho Head where I could be meaner, uglier, uh, irreverent, irascible, uh, just belligerent, that guy, uh, no problem in that makeup because that had nothing to do with Lou. Yeah. And um, and Rob gave me that advice, and I, I, I took that advice and, and and sailed with it. So, uh, but it, it, it also is something that you don't just white shake off, or I don't. Mm. Um, and it stays with you a little bit, and you're, uh, you know, it's it's not a... It's it's not a character that I would necessarily like to have hanging out in my you know my bag of tricks, but it is there. If I had to revisit him, I could, or I would. You know, I'd do anything for Rob, and mm -hmm. so he asked me to do that, and I, and I appreciate the opportunity, yeah. and and I, I like what we did with it, you yeah. know, and I like how it served the film and and the part of the story. Um, but yeah, it's it's a dark place you go to, for sure. Well, it. It totally shows because I think you portrayed him really, really well. It was one of my favorite parts of oh, of the that. film. It's and not easy being green. No, no. It's... Kermit was right. <laughs> it was it was really well done, and and I totally understand where you're coming from because it really was a dark place. It, you mm. he was the, a pretty demented character. Always, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think you have to be that place if if you're going to do those things. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't be a little. Uh, you can't live in in the in a shade of gray there. Right. You can't. You can't be Axel playing Psycho Head. Not so much. <laughs> Not so much. So if you could pick, like, kind of like character types, are you? Do you lean towards more of like an an Axel character type to play, or do you like playing the darker roles as well? Uh, I like playing. I I like. Uh, I like characters who aren't defined so mm. specifically. Okay. So maybe get the guys who are in between both. Yeah. Uh, who, or who have a little of both in between them. Whatever character, though. Uh, I don't judge them or, or I don't edit them as far as this is a good person or this is a bad person. Okay. I sort of look at things. We all started as little children, little boys and little girls, little darling angels somewhere out of birth, hopefully. <laughs> and the idea of how we were developed and how we were raised and, and evolved into the adults that we become, and if somewhere along those lines there 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 was abuse or something happened to send that person psychologically or emotionally askew, <laughs> then I, I try to recognize those things mm -hmm. and give reason to why a psycho head exists in the world, to give reason why there is racism, to give reason why there's terrorism, and not just not to judge it right. and not to judge the characters that I'm bringing to help serve the story. And um, so uh, that's what I'm interested in. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think what I am learning is that if I can find 
something likable in that character, then I can be a little bit more enthused towards it. We're going to wrap this up a little bit here. Um, what we like to do is one final question. Yes. Okay, so what was your first experience with horror? You can dig it back or your most favorite memorable moment with horror. Wow. my. Uh, I think my first experience with horror was uh, uh, psychologically was Rosemary's Baby. Oh, yeah. And so I feel like that's been uh, entirely... A movie that's always scared me because when I saw it at the time I didn't understand it uh, but it 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 uh, drew it drew me in and and it made me nervous Rosemary's baby and um, that that scares me that that's to me the scariest uh, horror film and it's because uh, that it scares you uh, mentally psychologically and emotionally so um, so that's what I would say about uh, what 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 is that experience like for me? Yeah, well, I'm a big fan of Rosemary's Baby. I watched the movies and read the books. There's oh, two cool. of them. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I've never read the books. Oh, they're so good. Yeah, I, I recommend it. It it was they're really they're both of them are really good reads. So if you like the movie, I recommend reading the books because it's it's phenomenal. So. I'll do. I'll read the books then. Lou, tell us where can our our fans find you in? I do hear there is an upcoming movie, too. Is oh, that yeah. Uh, well, of course, um, 31 is out now. Right. Video on demand, and on October 20th, depending on when this airs, it'll be a, a small theatrical release in a theater near you um, October the 20th. So that's Rob Zombie's 31. Uh, s thriller, suspense thriller, more of an action movie, on the 2nd of December is Kidnap with Halle Berry, Halle Berry and myself. And... Um, it's kidnap. She wants her kid back. Uh, <laughs> apparently, you want those back when they get taken. I hear that, but I don't have any more myself, so I don't really so, know. So, <laughs> um, so you can check that out. Get a little Christmas shopping viewing uh, as that goes. Yeah. And you can see me in that. And then I'm on Twitter, Lou Temple actor, so original. And uh, there is a Facebook page, Lou Temple, that is. Um, run by it's a fan page but i always get all the messages so check into that man and um well i want to say thank you so much for doing this interview with us pleasure. it was so amazing i'm sorry about the technical difficulties right. um but i've really really enjoyed meeting you Likewise. and thank you i would say uh, <laughs> i would say welcome uh welcome to the horror show yes. keep tuning in and stay, stay scared, scared. Keep hanging out at the Horse Show TV. Yes. Thank you so much. Right on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very My much. My pleasure. I appreciate yeah. it. Well done. Thank you so much. <laughs>